Greetings friends, it's me John Ross and I'm here with another fun-filled science activity for you. Today we're talking about mixtures and solutions. Now, in the state of South Carolina, we begin talking about mixtures and solutions in depth within the fifth grade. That being said, we're going to be talking about some key vocabulary today and making it real world for our children. Some of that vocabulary that we're going to be talking about is solute and solvent. Now, for years and years, my children struggled to be able to discern, tell the difference now, between solute and solvent. And I had a student, a brilliant student, who uh, uh, shared with me, Oh, Mr. Ross, well, you can count the number of letters there. And so we count those letters. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six letters in solute. And then let's check out solvent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven letters in solvent. Now, what those two words mean, one is or means um, the object that there is more of in a solution, and one means the object that there is less of. Well, which one of these has more letters? Well, that would be solvent. So solvent, that's seven letters, solvent equals more. That's more of one of those two substances that makes up a solution. The solute, there's only six letters, so that's less. So, when well, we're talking solutions, and a common example, of course, is Kool-Aid. And we got, to make that Kool-Aid, we got some powder, and we've got some water, and then we mix it up, and we stir it up, and then, presto, we've got some yummy Kool-Aid, right? Well, we can alter the amount of um, the object, the solute, if we so choose, or we can also alter the amount of the solvent as well to impact our concentration level. Now, that being said, Let's talk specifically in this scenario. What do we have more of? Do we have more water or do we have more Kool-Aid powder? Well, the kids will say, you got more water. That's right. So that is therefore my solvent. What do I have less of? I have less Kool-Aid powder. So therefore, the Kool-Aid powder is my solid. All right, good. They're getting a nice understanding about that. Now we can take it up a notch and we can talk concentration levels. We got a high concentration level, we got a low concentration level. Now, I've got two cups right here. Cup A had about a fourth of a uh, cup of Kool-Aid powder mixed in with those two quarts of water. Cup B had half of a cup of Kool-Aid powder mixed in with those two quarts of water. And so I like to start out as I'm introducing concentration level, that concept to my students, by asking them to simply observe their Kool-Aid by um, utilizing three of their five senses. We're going to be making some qualitative observations. First thing, let's look at the difference. Cup A is lighter. Cup B is darker. I can see to the bottom in cup A. I cannot see to the bottom in cup B. So that's using our eyes. Now, let me check out and see if I can smell a difference. Maybe I can smell a difference. It smells yummy. Cup B. I'm not picking up much of a smell at all. So cup B has a stronger smell. Cup A has a weaker smell. Now, we can try out our third um, qualitative observation using our third sense, and that would be the sense of taste. So let's try Cup A. Tastes like flavored water. Not much going on there. Mm-hmm. Cup B, and that's where it's at. It tastes like Kool-Aid. So now, at that point, I asked my kids, which was stronger? Um, which had the stronger taste, the stronger smell, which was the darker in color? And they're able to tell me, well, that's obviously cut B. Well, I want them to associate stronger with higher level of concentration. And I explained to my kids, 
where I ask them as to why they think cup B has a stronger level of concentration level. It had cup B and A, they both had the same amount of water. Well, what did we change? We changed the amount of solute that we added there. One had one fourth of a cup of Kool-Aid powder, the other had um, half of a cup of Kool-Aid powder. So again, that's just getting us to, um, getting your students to be able to recognize the difference between high concentration level versus low concentration level. And we can take things a little bit further um, because what I have found is that oftentimes students seem to think, at least my kids in my classes, because we'll do this a couple times, of course, to really reinforce uh, the difference between high and low concentration levels, the difference between solute and solvent. So I'll do it with Kool-Aid powder, and then I'll do it with like lemonade powder mix. And so what starts to happen is my students, inadvertently, they start to associate the solute with a solid and the solvent with a liquid. And while that is the case for the Kool-Aid and the lemonade, it's just not simply always the case. For example, we can have two liquids, um, one as our solute and one as our solvent. They love this one right here, by the way. So we take some milk and I pour them a glass of milk, actually two, and we've got a cup A and we've got a cup B. And then I get my Hershey syrup and I'm gonna go ahead and pour some syrup up in there. One, two, three, four, five. Just about five seconds worth now. Now I'm gonna come over here to cup B, I'm gonna double it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, they've got five seconds worth of Hershey syrup. 10 seconds worth worth of Hershey syrup. And do I know exactly how much Hershey syrup that is? No, but my kids know that there's more in cup B than there is in cup A. And that's really the important thing. They also know that there's more milk than there is um, Hershey syrup. So I asked my kids to begin with, which of those substances, the milk or the syrup, which of those substances is your solute? Well, there's less Hershey syrup, so therefore the Hershey syrup is my solute. And there's more milk, so therefore the milk is my solvent. And again, the intent of bringing in the Hershey syrup and the milk um, is to allow your kids to understand that there can be two liquids involved in a solution. So go ahead and mix up that milk and that Hershey syrup. Gonna mix it up real good now. Now I'm gonna switch to cup B and stir that up real well. And we can do at this point what we did previously with the Kool-Aid and with the lemonade um, as well. So Again, I like to start out by asking my students to make some qualitative observations. All right, kids, well, let us smell, perhaps, those two cups. Oh, nice and rich, very chocolatey. That's cup B. Okay, it's nice and rich, but maybe not quite as rich. Check out the colors, see if there's a color difference as well. And you might need to give them a minute or two to really stir up that chocolate syrup to get it um, um, to dissolve and spread out well throughout the milk. Is there a difference between the color of cup A and cup B? Perhaps a slight difference. Cup B does appear to be um, a little bit darker. And now we move on to the third and final qualitative observation. That is, of course, utilizing our taste buds. So let's taste cup A. Okay, not bad. Compare time. Oh yes, cup B is definitely stronger, without a doubt. So then I ask my kids again, which is stronger in taste, perhaps, and they'll tell me cup B. And again, I want them to uh, start to associate stronger with higher level 
concentration. Which is weaker, children? That would be cup A. So cup A has a lower level concentration. And that's pretty much it. But again, this just allows your students an opportunity to explore solutions that involve liquids and solids, but also just simply liquids. Thank you so much, friends. I hope you enjoyed our fun-filled activities, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.